If there's a class right now that you're kind of dreading at the moment, you're in the right place because I have a few tips, I have a few strategies that you can use today that you could try with your classes. And I really think you'll see a change in both them and how you feel when they walk in. So let's go. And can we please agree on something? And that something is you don't hate your students. None of us hate our students. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but we hate their behavior. Whatever. I know in my thumbnail, it says how to survive a class we hate, but hate's a strong word. And I may have used it to get you to click on this video. It is totally possible to hate student behaviors. I have hated certain behaviors so bad that I would think about these behaviors on my drive to school. If you have children, it's kind of like the moment you want to take one of their toys and just chuck them all outside because you're so aggravated and frustrated because you're stepping on all the pieces and your kids never put them back into the box. And in those moments, you don't hate your children ever. You hate their behavior and the toys. I love you, sweetheart, but if I step on one more Dalmatian, you're gonna go live at grandma's. If you are new here, hello, my name is Alexa Baroda. I am a high school English teacher. I also taught middle school for eight years. And I love to talk about tips, tricks, and pretty much all things teaching. If you like this video, subscribe. You might not use or need to use all of these strategies. Literally one of these strategies might be what it takes to take your class back, if you know what I'm saying. Give them cool stickers. I've said this before. If you don't believe me, check out this comment from Jake Bagwell. He commented one of my videos and said, if my teachers gave me a sticker, I'd be happy even if I failed. No matter how old our students are, who doesn't love a good sticker? First, let's identify the three key reasons why students tend to be uncontrollable or apathetic or any of those things. One, probably the most popular, they're bored. Don't take offense to this. Doesn't mean it's your fault necessarily. They're so addicted to different forms of technology, video games, cell phones, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal with that. Two, they're tired. We don't know what their whole day is like or what their night was like before. Maybe they're tired because they stayed up all night playing video games. Maybe they're tired because they were helping mom with the baby. Who knows? Three, they're hungry. Might be why they're tired. Four, they don't understand what you're doing, what's going on. They don't understand the content. It's too hard for them. And you know, there's number five. There are other factors such as students maybe needing medication, maybe needing to be in a certain class, things like that, which I'm not going to get into in this particular vlog. Okay, I always say to do this first. You need to change your mindset. It's almost like when you walk into a diet, you have all the right ideas, but you're not fully on board with it. You have the diet going on for one or two days and then you just kind of fall off. Maybe you're even five pounds heavier than you were before. So get into the mindset that you are going to change the dynamic of this class. You're going to change up what you're doing because whatever was happening before wasn't working for the class as a whole. So get your mindset in order first and, and get excited. Be enthusiastic. If you don't have enthusiasm for your students and for your classroom, it doesn't matter what you plan. It doesn't matter. All right. I like to start with moving all the desks. Something needs to change in the room. I'm serious, you need to change up the energy in there and one of the easiest ways to do that is to move the desks around in any way you want. And if I have nasty students in a class that I'm trying to change the vibe, when I say nasty, I just mean they have something to say about everything. So when I change the desks, this works every single time. Nobody seems to get upset about sitting in a different seat or me asking them where to sit. I do this cut out enough squares for every student in this class and make sure there's a duplicate because they're going to have to find where they need to sit. As they walk into class, give them their square. On it, you could write a quote, a symbol, draw a picture, smiley face, poop, like whatever grabs their attention and makes them smile or laugh and tell them, now find the other one on one of these desks. And you immediately just turn that into a game. Now they're gonna walk in, they're gonna look for theirs, they're going to see what everyone else does when they walk in. And now boom, the energy of your class has just changed, but you can't stop there. If you have a truly hard class that you dread, you really need to take it about 20 steps back. Go back to those days when they first entered your classroom. All those things that you did, try them again. For example, go over all your expectations and follow through with them. Don't let anybody walk in late without a pass 
and just let them get away with it. They're going to walk all over you. Show them that you're paying attention. So just go over the consequences and stick to them. In the beginning of the year, all those icebreaker activities, getting to know you activities, do them again. You need to work on the relationships, the relationship between you and them and the relationship they have with each other. In order for you all to get something out of it, you really need to pause, right? Even if it's for an entire week, your sanity and your mental health probably depend on it. Whatever the curriculum is, sorry, but that needs to go on the back burner or just figure out how every single lesson you do that week, whatever it is, is going to be fun. You need to focus for a whole week on just fun, movement, humor, all the things. Something else you can do starting tomorrow. I love this one. This one always works, always. Spend some time updating their grades and conference with them about their grades. Whether they have an A or they are failing, something about how they act after you have pulled them aside and spoke with them about their grade, something changes. And it's always for the better. It's like this moment of, okay, you took the time to look into how I'm doing. You took the time to talk to me about it. You know, they don't say that they appreciate it, but you can feel that they do. This always works for me when I conference with students about their grades and when their grades are updated. We all can fall behind with grading because life happens. How many times have we given an assignment and we're like, oh, when am I going to grade this thing? It happens. No need to beat yourself up about it, but if you're struggling and dreading a class, update those grades because they need to see that you're paying attention to them and that you mean business. Here's another idea. Lots and lots of positive reinforcement. Chances are you have not been giving a whole lot of positive reinforcement. When the energy of a class is really low or really high and to the point of like disrespectful, we can kind of fall behind on the positive reinforcement because we're too busy trying to control the behavior of our class. Please check out a video that I posted last year where I talk about my merit point incentive. I did it for eight years in middle school and it was the best. I would still be doing it if it were appropriate for high school. I created a pretty good icebreaker vlog last summer. Check it out, it's up here somewhere. I'll also post it in the description box. I have some pretty good low prep ideas there. For one day, for one week, you could try to truly be intentional, extra conscientious of this one class and just trying really hard, like really hard. Not to point out the negative behavior you're seeing. Even when you see it, just try, if it's possible, not to point it out. For example, saying, oh, once again, nobody wants to talk to each other in here. Or once again, you're throwing things around the room. Or once again, you won't sit in your seat. Like Sometimes we say these things out of frustration. Try hard not to and try a little bit harder. Just be positive. This needs to be consistent. If you follow my channel or if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen what I do with my high schoolers. I have this raffle system. In short, I'm not going to get all into it, but in short, I give these raffle tickets out for a student maybe going above and beyond, doing really well on tests for perfect attendance, just, just whatever I feel like giving positive reinforcement about. Sometimes I'll take time and I'll focus on one class per week and I will make sure that I write everyone in that one class because it's too much to do everybody a personal message. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but man, does it go a long way, especially if you can tell that a class is going to be a little more challenging than others. Moving on, you gotta get some active learning going on, some movement. This doesn't mean that you give out lots of worksheets, whether that be online or on paper. That's not what I'm saying, but maybe you do. Maybe that is the way that you typically teach on the regular. You teach a lesson and you give a worksheet. If that's what you're doing, that very well could be a reason. I'm not trying to put anybody down here, but that could very well be a reason. The vibe in the room is kind of low. I can't sit here in this moment right now and, and tell you how to get your students moving all around the room because I don't really feel like creating a vlog that long. <laughs> but I mean, here's a really simple idea. If you have anchor chart paper or multiple dry erase boards around your room, pose questions around the room. And you could either just let them go, give them a marker and let them go, put them in groups, have them rotate and have them answer the questions. Boom, they're being active. Boom, they're talking to each other. And as long as your questions are engaging, they're enjoying themselves. 
Um, you could take whatever questions that you were going to put on a worksheet or whatever questions you had planned on asking in class, write them on bulletin board paper instead and put strips of big paper on the desks all around your room. So if you have a group of desks here and a group of desks there and a group of desks back there, put bulletin board paper over the desks with the question, give every student a marker and let them go around to all the different colors of the bulletin board paper and answer the question on paper. You could even take it a step further and have them comment back. Another way you could take it a step back, something you could start doing tomorrow is how well do they know you as a human being and not just their teacher? Why not? Stop what you're doing and just like in the beginning of the year when you kind of introduce yourself, reimagine that and share a piece of your life, a piece you feel they would really enjoy learning about because you can't talk about your whole life, right? And share it with them. Create a slideshow of pictures. Share a funny video of one of your kids. Share a video of yourself when you were a teenager. It's usually the things that are not related <laughs> to the curriculum that change behaviors in class for the better. Do you want to wake them up? Maybe you feel like they hate you and you want to make them laugh. Prank them. Prank them. Prank them. Oh, I just love me a good prank. I think I did four pranks on my students this past week. Pranks. If you don't have any, get yourself like a battery operated moving rat or little rubber insects. I think you know where I'm going with this. Put it on their desk. Put it on their chair. They have folders in your class. Put a little rubber centipede in their folder and wait. I have a rat that I use all the time. Prank them. Snacks, snacks and water or juice. You can't give them snacks and juice every single day, but if you can make it work, save it for certain moments. Personally, I like those little Dum Dum lollipops. They're small, you get so many in a pack and they're really affordable. Try to get some snacks for this class. So this class or these classes, hopefully not, that you kind of dread the behavior that you kind of hate, you might have a handful of students who just are great. Maybe you could put those students together and have them work on their own little mini project while you're working with the rest of the class on other things. Look who just came downstairs. <laughs> Focus. I love you. Um, and if you're really trying to survive, right, let's say you just, you can't do the icebreakers and for some reason you really, really need to stick to the curriculum. You, well, you need to come up with a project that will take them four days or so to complete. Projects are the best because they take pressure off of you as their teacher. Yeah, it takes a bit of work to explain the project and to model it for them, but then you usually have a few days where you could just sit back and let them work. While they're working on that project, you can start thinking of what the next thing is going to be, and the next things that they could be are the strategies that I kind of just went over. There's a whole lot more I would love to share with you, but my daughter's up. She needs me. I need to go. I wish you the best of luck. We've all been there. Just breathe. Remind yourself, it's not them, it's their behavior. And 99.9% .9 of behaviors can be changed. And it starts with our mindset and our own enthusiasm for what we're teaching and for our kids. Good luck and feel free to share any of your stories in the comments. If you have any questions about your own personal situation, I can't promise I can fix it, but I could try to give you some personal advice in a comment. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, bye, folks. Bye, folks. Say happy teaching. Happy teaching. Mwah. Mwah.